Ripple CBDC advisor is delighted with Montenegro's CBDC pilot as Ripple hosts workshops and engages in meetings for the stablecoin project. By the way, is the U.S. Congressman Stephen Lynch right to have claimed that the SEC won its lawsuit against Ripple? Also, Catalyze Research has recently partnered with Ripple to expand XRP's ledger presence in South Korea. Finally, can XRP rally to $20,000 this year? Keep watching this video to find out more so that you don't miss out on an excellent opportunity to win a giveaway of 300 XRP tokens at the end of this month. Hey guys, welcome back to Whiteboard Crypto Update, the best spot for your daily dose of everything XRP and cryptocurrency. In today's video, we will talk about XRP's future. So be sure to stay focused as you surely don't want to miss out on this. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. Please remember this is not a financial advice video. Anthony Welfare, CBDC advisor at Ripple, took to Twitter to express delight in working with a dedicated team of experts in Montenegro regarding the National Stablecoin project. According to the tweet, it is a continuation of activities on implementing the country's central bank digital currency pilot project. The Central Bank of Montenegro website provides further insight into the ongoing efforts to implement the stablecoin project in the country. The report highlights that Ripple sent its experts to Montenegro this week. During their visit, the Ripple representatives conducted two enlightening workshops. The first workshop covered asset tokenization, while the second delved into programmability. These workshops were tailored for attendees from diverse sectors, including financial service facilitators, public and private institutions, and scholars from the academic realm. Through these educational events, participants gained invaluable knowledge about the working principle of blockchain technology and its vast possibilities. Additionally, Ripple's experts engaged in several productive meetings with reps from various groups. These meetings aimed to foster idea exchange and identify potential candidates for testing CBDC in Montenegro. Notably, the central point of Montenegro's pilot project is to equip the public with hands-on experience in utilizing the proposed digital currency while being mindful of its risks. The implications on regulations, cybersecurity, and users' rights and privacy were of particular concern. By actively participating in these educational and exploratory activities, Montenegro aligned itself with most banks worldwide. According to a report which the CBCG cited, approximately 93% of all Apex banks have already embarked on CBDC tests. It noted that over half of them have been actively performing real experiments like Montenegro. Meanwhile, Ripple's CBDC endeavors transcends the borders of Montenegro. The San Francisco-based payments company rolled out its dedicated CBDC platform in May to allow public and private financial institutions launch their digital currencies. A month before that, Montenegro confirmed Ripple as its official CBDC project partner. Ripple is currently powering digital currency projects for several countries, including the Republic of Palau, Colombia, and Bhutan. Notably, some of the congressmen attorney Deaton tagged in the tweet include committee chair Patrick McHenry, Warren Davidson, Bill Huizenga, French Hill, Tom Emmer, and Darren Soto. Besides Deaton, other XRP enthusiasts also reacted to Rep Lynch's remark at the recent congressional hearing. Notably, XRP community members expressed disappointment with Rep. Lynch for claiming the SEC won the Ripple lawsuit. Some XRP enthusiasts disagreed with Rep. Lynch's position that the SEC is regulating through the application of the law. A community member called attention to comments made by Magistrate Judge Sarah Netburn in the Ripple case. Judge Netburn had criticized the SEC for litigating for its internal goal and not out of allegiance to the law. Meanwhile, Ripple has clarified that it won the lawsuit, despite the judge's ruling that its past XRP sales to institutional clients constitute securities. 
As reported, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse said the court's ruling was an unequivocal win for the company, as XRP was declared a non-security. Ripple has reiterated that its primary focus in the lawsuit was to ensure XRP is given clarity and the company got its desire. Furthermore, Catalyze Research, a consultancy focused on Web3 and blockchain solutions, took to Twitter to announce a collaboration with Ripple. This partnership aims to bolster the presence of the XRP ledger in the vibrant South Korean market. The Ripple official blog featured the development, highlighting Catalyze Research's reputation as a leading Web3 and blockchain consulting group. Together, Ripple and Catalyze Research seek to tap into the rich potential of South Korea's crypto-based developer community, boosting XRPL. At the heart of this collaboration lies a vision to empower South Korean developers. It will include an XRPL development education agenda targeted at the needs of South Korean software engineers. The local developer community will also be engaged through workshops, meetups, and hackathons. Additionally, strategies will be devised to seamlessly integrate various decentralized finance and NFT-based dApps on the XRP Ledger ecosystem. Marcus Infanger, the vice president of Ripplex Growth at Ripple, expressed enthusiasm for the collaboration, acknowledging South Korea's status as a thriving hub for blockchain technology. He emphasized their shared vision to foster growth and adoption, providing South Korean developers with the support to unlock the full potential of XRP Ledger. Ben Ko, CEO of Catalyze Research, echoed a similar sentiment, stating that they aim to accelerate the growth of XRPL in South Korea by promoting innovation and collaboration. The CEO envisions nurturing an atmosphere driving accelerated growth in South Korea, propelling the nation to global leadership in blockchain technology. Notably, the collaboration with Catalyze Research represents one of many endeavors Ripple has undertaken in recent times to foster development and innovation. As was reported, Ripple joined forces in a project to test the issuance of central bank digital currencies and stablecoins. Now to the big question of the day. Can XRP rally to $20,000 this year? In the crypto scene, where wild speculations often dominate discussions, Chad Steingraber, the creative director at Ghost Punch Games, has presented an ambitious case for the possibility of XRP reaching an astounding $20,000 price point. While it is important to note that these are mere speculations and there is no guarantee that such events will occur, his insights offer intriguing food for thought. Steingraber starts by laying out three fundamental principles that determine the value of an asset. First and foremost, there's the classic economic principle of supply and demand. In the case of XRP, with a limited supply of less than 100 billion coins, scarcity could significantly drive up prices if the demand surges. Secondly, using a real estate analogy, he delves into the market appreciation concept. When assets appreciate in value over time, the overall market value increases, even if the actual money injection remains limited. Lastly, he calls attention to the notion of limited assets highlighting the value attributed to assets like the Mona Lisa due to their uniqueness and societal importance. Transitioning to the specifics of XRP, Steingraber emphasizes its limited supply and the deflationary mechanism caused by burning small portions of XRP during ledger transactions. He underscores the importance of the circulating supply, which heavily influences the asset's price. At present, XRP's market cap is around $37.7 billion. This value was $18 billion currently. However, this number doesn't represent the actual amount of money invested in XRP. However, it merely reflects the current value people are willing to pay. Steingraber touches on Ripple's on-demand liquidity service, explaining that it is designed for small banks and money transmitters, not major institutions like Bank of America, Chase, or Wells Fargo. These major players are unlikely to use ODL for their massive global transfers, emphasizing the need for privacy. The creative director contends that banks require privacy for internal ledger transactions, 
and XRP was never intended for public retail trading. Instead, he speculates that banks will create private XRP ledgers and issue their derivatives, similar to how central banks hold gold as a backing asset. Well, guys, that's all we have for you today. What are your thoughts on XRP? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, then be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Also, if you don't want to miss out on any new future videos, then be sure to click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification under this video so that you're notified the next time we upload a video on the latest XRP and cryptocurrency news. Until the next video comes out, you can watch our other videos about XRP or other cryptocurrencies. Thank you for watching, and we will see you again in the next video. Goodbye.